This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 271 of The Real Word. Word is up. And you're not down here. Nicole. No, I'm not. I never really got the official invite. So yeah, I invited you on the real world. I decided to hang out here where it's rainy and shitty for the next, I feel like nine years. Mm. But well, the, the sun is out. I can are... see it. Is that a window behind you? It looks pretty <laughs> sunny the... back there. Yeah, but we're inside. So we're inside all day. So you're not missing anything. And I'm at the T360 summit, the leadership summit every year. It's about 400 people here in Nicole. It's a lot of MLS execs, the amount of MLS people that show up to this thing is mind boggling. Hmm. Uh, so the MLS has definitely sent a lot of people to this. You've got all the major CEOs of the brokerages. I'm going to be talking to Nick Bailey coming up. Uh, I thought he was he was up on a panel of four with Gino Blafari and um, Sue Yanacor from Anywhere and as well as uh, Mark uh, King from Keller Williams. So they had those four on a panel. Nick, You know what? Nick is just CEO of Remax, he, he's the most authentic CEO in real estate. That's saying a lot. I'm really just impressed with him. And so it, a lot of good stuff coming. Anyways, you're not here. I'll, no, but I'm I'll glad you're actually going. I'm glad you're actually showing face in there. I am. And we're going to start with, in honor of the T360 event, we're, we're going to share uh, racket number one. We're going to share an article from realestatenews.com, which is their new news portal or website. Um, and here's the headline homes.com making big strides in portal race, but Zillow dominates. We're also going to recap, Nicole, we, we did a racket on Ray Ellen's homes.com original piece, which right. is now updated. Okay. So it's a good, it's a good piece. It's pretty dynamic. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about this real estate news piece. Then we'll talk about the Ray Ellen piece. This is all like bundled in here to yep. racket. Number one, I actually did get a, a personal call from homes.com CEO, David, uh, Mele as well. I think it's Mele. It's, somebody just told me how to pronounce it yesterday. Saw a couple homes.com guys here. Uh, anyways, let, let's jump into the real estate news story. CoStar Investments in homes.coms appears to be paying off as the home, stri uh, home search site boasts more than 100% year over year growth. We covered this growth uh, previously. Zillow's up top with 43% share. Um, They've got this 113% year-over-year growth at his homes.com. Realtor.com remains in second place at 18.6%, and Redfin claimed 15% of portal traffic in March. So Zillow is still, still the clear king of the hill, but homes.com is uh, – they're benefiting from CoStar's investments in advertising online, yep. okay? They're also benefiting offline, TV, radio, uh, et cetera. But there's also a high affinity – for the term homes by consumers. And so the flow of traffic, both direct and organic for homes.com is very sustainable. Uh, this is a, this is according to uh, Jones from, who, who is this, uh, this quote from, uh, I'm sorry, it's from, I don't know, somebody from homes.com, obviously our co-star. Uh, I'll find the name here in just a second. So uh, they're talking about the SEO, looking at the numbers here. Here's the big takeaway. Realtor.com traffic appears to be defecting to homes.com and Zillow. Uh, given the effectiveness of ad spend, both homes.com and Zillow will take a substantial investment from News Corp into advertising the change in flow of traffic. Okay, so, and listen, Nicole, you and I, we, we supply Realtor.com to our team, Connecticut. You yep. know, we did, we did 700 deals last year. We do Realtor, we do Zillow, we do, you know. And Realtor has been maybe under delivering a little bit. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, it's possible. Uh, I, I know that for sure. We're digging into the data on our end. I know that for sure for some other teams around the country. So that might be reflective. Yeah, okay. There's less searching going on on some of these portals with just the state of interest rates and the state of the market. Or it could be reflective of what this piece is saying, that homes.com is digging into it digging into their market share. Nicole, homes.com, you find anybody using it? I don't know anyone that's using it, no. Not no. a one? Not a one, no. Nope. I was talking to some of these co-star guys, homes.com specifically guys yesterday here, and uh, you know, they said, I said, hey, you know, HomeSnap's always just been realtors using it. They say, yeah, we got a couple million consumers using it, but that's basically just agents sending home snap to consumers consumers don't know what home snap is unless they no, get it from their agent. agents are definitely using home. i mean i get texts 
from agents through, not through HomeSnap, but they send me HomeSnap. I'm like, what the, it just, yes. Anyway, keep going. And and so they want to take all the good things from HomeSnap and put it into homes.com basically, you know, whatever good parts HomeSnap has, they really want to push it into homes.com because homes.com is showing incredible growth. It's 113% year over year. So they really do believe that homes.com can be a direct competitor to Zillow, Realtor, and Redfin on traffic. And we know obviously that CoStar was rumored to buy Realtor.com. You know, Rupert Murdoch kind of leaked out that story and, and then everybody became aware of it. And now they've obviously cooled on the deal and they're going to continue to invest in homes.com, which means, and I, I like what Real Estate News said, it means Realtor.com is going to have to decide, are we going to step up and continue to spend to hold our market share? Or if we don't, we might be devaluing our own company and Homes.com might pass us without having you know, you know, a CoStar acquisition. There's also been, and I've predicted this a bunch in the past, CoStar could go out and buy Redfin. Um, might from some of the conversations I'm having here might not be the perfect fit because they are so brokerage heavy. They, ha- they have, you know, home R- CoStar and homes.com do not want to be a brokerage. So that's what they're saying right now. They have no intentions like CoStar with commercial of being a brokerage. And so they want to build the best portal in the game with homes.com. Do you like CoStar's approach and, and Nicole, and just when I finish this pod, I'm going to be going in and, and listening to Andy Florence's, the CEO of CoStar, his comments at T360. I'm I'm probably most excited to hear from him because I'm going to be taking a lot of notes and um, I want to see how he's thinking about residential because the homes.com people I talked to yesterday, they said, we're coming. I mean, this isn't like we've been feeling around for the last couple of years and now we're we're going all in here on residential. I think, again, I think, it, I mean, we've been, I, I, it's just one of those things that we've been talking about forever, though, that, um, I, again, Zillow is obviously, what are they calling him? The, 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 the king on the hill. So I top am of the ex- mountain. top of the mountain. I am, I, I like king of the hill better anyway. Um, but I am excited to see someone else moving in and, and maybe, um, maybe making a little bit of competition for Zillow, keep them on their toes a bit. And that was Raymond James, VP of Investor Relations at SimilarWeb. So it was not somebody that the quote um, that I mentioned before. Also, Jones said the challenge for uh, Zillow Group is optimization. It is to their benefit to invest as much as possible into driving Zillow traffic until changes in marginal costs indicate that it would be better to invest in driving Trulia traffic. Of course, they still have the Trulia brand. Uh, From Zillow Group's perspective, that signal is likely not there at this time. So they want to continue to drive. Remember Zillow's, you know, on their earnings call, they keep talking about 3% market share of transactions to 6% market share. So Zillow is leaning more and more and more into like wanting to control the transaction and capitalize there. CoStar has said, you know, we're not going to do that. We're going to be more about listing placement and really sell advertising to listing agents versus uh, you know, how Zillow does with Flex and how, how they're managing these, you know, lead flow into teams uh, and really capitalizing on the buyer side. It'll be interesting to see if homes.com can really create that market share uh, to be a true competitor to Zillow. The homes.com response that we talked about on a, you know, we talked about this on a previous real word, Nicole. Yep where they've been so aggressive in the marketing that you were seeing agents, our names in particular. And we said, Hey, if you're an agent, look up your name. It's probably going to pop up on YouTube. Here's a response from uh, David to Ray Allen, who wrote the first piece. I also spoke to David over text as well. Uh, So Ray says after he published, you know, he talked to David Malay from uh, CEO from homes. My first article, the primary con, CERN was the diversion of traffic to the homes.com website when someone would search an agent's name on YouTube, uh, when consumers likely meant to click on that agent's YouTube channel. He was taking the approach of like, hey, creators brand is being kind of like stolen hijacked. by homes.com, yeah. hijacked. Yeah, better word, hijacked, and then sent to homes.com. Okay, so here's the conversation with homes.com CEO. Ray, one of the questions I was asked by agents is homes.com have the right to use an agent's name, image, or likeness to advertise on or market on the homes.com website. Me and you were both like, you know, of course they do because they're signed into HomeSnap, which, you know, there is owned by, right. you know, basically Homes.com and CoStar. Um, the CEO of Homes.com says, 
Uh, homes.com has not specifically selected and used agents' names, images, or likeness to advertise in the homes.com website. Me and you first guessed that. We're like, yeah. they're not selecting Ray Ellen. Right. Like, wait a, like Ray. Well, they, I, we Googled you, and then I'm like, wait, Google me. I'm like, I don't even have a YouTube presence. They and don't then, have They don't have yeah. a team of staff sitting there like, hmm, who are the Ray Ellens of the world? Let me figure this out and, and yeah. personally select them. This was a YouTube algorithm right. uh, for agents that, that they were using. Uh, but we have utilized Google's DSA system, so which generated ads based on content that was listed at homes.com, which included both property listings and agent profiles. Okay. Uh, Ray said, what about selling those leads? You also stated in your updated response that you couldn't buy a lead from homes.com. Uh, th th this was the CEO's uh, yep. stance. Hey, you can't buy leads from us right now. Uh, I've purchased leads from homes.com is what Ray says. Is this service no longer available? And the CEO says, that's correct. Homes.com did sell leads in the past. We discontinued that when CoStar acquired Homes.com in May of 2021. And we should note that CoStar gave up 40 million plus of revenue when they discounted the sale of leads on Homes.com. But selling leads conflicts with a your listing, your lead model. And that sort of service is no longer available. So CoStar has never believed in selling buyer leads, they believe in your listing, your lead. Okay, interesting. Very. Um, so uh, here's the next question. Uh, Ray says, uh, you stated in your email that homes.com doesn't sell leads or trick users. Uh, click on your ad and submit leads and see where they go. One of the agent's spouses did this. They went to YouTube, searched for the agent, their name by spouse uh, name and saw the homes.com ad using that agent's name. They clicked on the ad, took the, them to the agent's profile page uh, on homes. Then started to search for a house, clicked on the house, submitted a request. That inquiry did not go through the agent whose name they had searched on YouTube because, of course, it went to the, to the listing agent. Uh, can you help me understand, uh, you know, situations like this that, that uh, we have received? If they had submitted an inquiry from the agent's profile page, that inquiry would have gone directly to the agent they landed on. Okay, so it had to be direct through the profile page. But if they continued to search for a house listed by another agent, then the inquiry would have gone directly to the listing agent for that house. Right. Uh, since we employ a your listing, your lead model, uh, all inquiries from a listing deal page go to the listing agent, listing agent only. And those leads are not sold to the listing agent. They are provided for free. Th this is like, remember like Instagram and Facebook used to be free. Now, you know, you pay like $11 a month for Instagram, right? It's like, let's acquire all the users. It's yeah. kind of what homes.com is doing. And then maybe, I don't well, know. Well, and it sounds like later. they're trying to build a little bit of camaraderie with agents too. So that agents start using homes, obviously continue to use HomeSnap. Because what are most agents so pissed about? You know, people coming through their list, like they're, that's my listing. Why didn't I get my own lead? They're, you know, they're obviously so, spurting those out. So this is an interesting way to really sort of become chummy with the listing agents for sure. Listing agents would want people to be using homes.com right now, meaning home shoppers, when I say people, uh, because that listing lead is going to come direct to them. And right, right now for free, uh, does home.com use tracking pixels to retarget visitors to the website with other homes.com ads on the platform? Um, CEO says homes.com is dedicated to enhancing the home buying search process. We are using tracking pixels that will help. Of course, they're using tracking pixels, right? Uh, it's another tool that helps home buyers find the right house. Uh, system also provides personalized, streamlined advertising service. This will allow home buyers easily connect with their preferred. Okay, so of course they're doing that. Um, how is homes.com making money? Okay, so that's the big question because hey, if you're gonna give this all to us for free, right? Um, the primary revenue model for homes.com will be a promoted listing model, similar to what CoStar has done on both apartments.com and loopnet.com. This is what we've been talking about for a while here. So pay attention. Um, if you're a listing agent, this is how you're when when homes.com continues to grow market share, this is how you're gonna have to place your listings on the site if you want maximum exposure for your sellers. And if homes.com starts to get 10, 15, 20% market share, it, it'll be a player in the game and you'll have to pay to play basically. This model will focus on helping agents market and sell homes rather than monetizing consumers as leads. Uh, you cannot buy leads from homes.com, apartments.com, or loopnet.com, but you will be able to boost a listing so that it receives additional exposure and marketing. Homes.com promoted listings will be available later this year. So right now they're in a race for market share and Love they're it. gonna launch this later this year. Um, and so listen, listing agents go to the home and say, hey, I'm gonna get you all the eyeballs on your home 
if homes.com has 10 or 15% of the eyeballs, they're going to have to pay this service just like For sure. commercial brokers. But again, what a great way to then generate your own leads to your own listings too. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I love it. All right. So there's two kind of updates on homes.com recapping the, you know, however many episodes ago, maybe we can flash the card up here, Haley, uh, from that previous real word Ray's updated his, uh, I'm looking forward to connecting David with you, uh, CEO of homes.com a little bit more. I'd love to, I wanted to see if he was here. He's not, uh, of course, Andy's here, but he's only here for his talk. He's, he's just taking, I think his personal jet in and out of Naples, Michael is flying in flying out. There's worse you know. things. There is worse things you could be doing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's what Damon John did yesterday. I guess he just took a, a little jet in here and out of here. He did the opening keynote yesterday. Why not? I mean, you know what I wrote down from Damon John? Just a little, little fun fact. What is it? Um, responsibility must be taken. It can't be given. When you think about agents right now complaining about, and maybe you're listening right now and you've got some agents in your office, some agents you're mentoring right now, and uh, they're complaining about the market. They're complaining about the situation. They're complaining about the leads. They're complaining about all, all the different variables that make up the 2023 market. Maybe you just take a little bit from Shark, Damon, John, who did the opening keynote here at T360, and you just let them know, hey, responsibility must be taken, meaning you must take the responsibility. It can't be given. We can't give responsibility uh, to anybody. And uh, Nick Bailey, again, who I mentioned earlier and who we'll be talking to a little bit later today, um, you know, he was talking about on the panel today, you know, you know, alluding to that failure rate and, and basically, um, you know, you can't want it for people, right? This, right. this is, uh, definitely can't want it more than, more than them. Than they want it. All right. Yeah. Uh, what do we all want as listing agents in the coal racket? Number two, real estate Good photographers. Photos. Yeah. Yes, we want that. They reveal the one listing photo that can make or break a sale. So Nicole, what is the one photo according to photographers? That is a make it or break it moment on the listing. Uh, it looks like it's our our exterior photos, not just the front photos. But again, they're doing these before and afters of even back patios, pools, um, making sure your landscaping is tight. So it's definitely your your exterior photo. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've seen so. I mean, it, that is the hook for your listing. Like you for know, sure. the first three seconds of an Instagram reel are for your content on IG. It, it's, I mean, they show the photo here and let's put it up with all the, the shade, the dark, the exterior shadows cast on this home yep. might be showing, might not be showing off in its best light. That's a great example Perfect. of something that is easy to scroll past as opposed to like, this house is beautiful with, um, you know, some of those brick features up front. If you had a front facing, meaning that the house is flat to the you know, to the screen facing photo and it was bright, maybe a twilight on yep. this property. Lighting that's a, is the secret sauce, it says. Yep. That's a million plus property. Uh, you've got you've got the columns out front. That could make a huge statement that's a scroll stopper on Zillow or maybe on a homes.com or whatever site uh, consumers are searching. And listen, this is going to be as as we kind of evolve as an industry away from what's worked the last 10 years and into the next 10 years. These are going to be the things that really separate the agents who can market the property in the best light, like, right. like the lead photo on this. And let's put up that one with the green door, Nicole, and the lighting. I mean, th does that look pretty good? Looks great. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Green door. What do we think about that for my, for my deal? We're not no. doing a green door. No, I don't like it. I don't like a green door for that no. house. Maybe a blow. Um, obviously the landscaping and all of that, but the agents that are helping position their sellers and their listing in a scroll stopping manner. Right. And so here's the other thing that even in important. this market though, even in this market. Yeah. I, oh yeah, yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Cause you, your ability to get the most money, Nicole, here's what we're, what we're doing with our team. We're, we're going to be bringing in somebody in house with marketing that has the ability to also do listing video and these kind of things. Right. And so we've traditionally always had a vendor. We are still going to continue to work with our vendor, but you know, the thing about a photography vendor that you don't control in house right, is that they're banging out multiple projects a day. Right. Okay. And so they're going from house to house, to house, to house, to house, to house. And so you don't have the time to maybe make it 10% better than the competition. Right. You kind of are like, 
in line with all the competition because everybody's using the same, same person. Guy, yeah. <laughs> Let us know in your community, are, is everybody using the same one or two photographers? Right. And so if you have somebody in house, are you able to spend a little bit more time, a little bit more detail, get a little bit more social marketing out of the listing photography and video experience while you're there? Could that not be the 10% difference that gets you the next listing and the next listing? Right. Being able to stand out against everybody else. That I think is something everybody's got to think about right huge. now. Huge. It's going to be huge. And then you got to go pay homes.com some money to enhance that to listing. Boost it. Yeah. So, so you got to pay, pay more for the marketing. Well, I mean, just move your money from Facebook maybe and put it over to homes. Yeah. I don't see too many agents advertising on Facebook right now. There's some people still advertising yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bam is go grab one of our free ebooks. We're advertising those. We're, we're actually advertising to give you the free ebook. So just go on to nowbam.com and get those. And you can also click on Bam X, which is down below, and get hooked up with Bam X, uh, the only marketplace in real estate that is not completely stealing your money. You can get in for a, every single month for a cup of coffee. So uh, get into Bam X and check that out, where we actually show you how to do things, not just tell you how to do things. All right, Nicole. Yep. Racket number three, we've got a reaction to a Ryan Surhan clip that's going around where he says, uh, if you want to make a million dollars in real estate, this is how you do it. Let's check it out. If they want to make a million dollars in real estate, what would you recommend for them to do? Do not immediately go into real estate investing. I think a lot of people think that that's where you make money. That's mm -hmm. also where you can lose a significant amount of money. Brokerage mm -hmm. is a no risk investment. Your time is what you're investing into creating relationships for people that are going to pay you to help them do a real estate transaction mm -hmm. that you have nothing to do mm -hmm. with. You don't have to buy the glue or the nuts or the bolts. There's no capital investment. And that's what's always set me free because the risk is your time, but the reward can be endless. If someone to make a million. All right. So one thing before we jump into his comments there, Nicole, did you notice he was wearing white socks? I know you're a big fan of white socks. I actually didn't. I feel like I <laughs> like that's white Nike socks. Under that suit. I missed it. I do. Yeah. I actually, I've really converted back to black ones, but I, I am a white sock lover. Yeah. People are uh, avid watchers of the show. A little psychotic there, Ryan, with the white Nike socks with a suit on, but I know it's, I know it's cold in New York. So I, I, I respect the the game there. Okay. Do you agree? Disagree? Uh, what's the quickest path to a million dollars in real estate right now? Well, he has his shoes off. Oh, you're going there. You didn't want to answer the question. I'm I just sorry. had like a great hook. I and... heard your hook. <laughs> All right, Nicole, quickest path to a million dollars in real estate right now. I actually, are we talking about being like an agent versus an agent just, versus investing? No, no, no. You're coming into the real estate industry, maybe investor. Maybe mortgage, maybe real estate agent, maybe anything, maybe builder, maybe working. Quickest path to a million dollars. Oh my God. Estate. I don't have an answer. I don't have a freaking answer. Wow. Way to, way to add something to that. I huh? don't, I can't add anything. I, cause it's, I mean, I feel, I, get, I mean, like what he's saying though is time. I mean, I'm thinking, all right, so mortgage would be great, but a lot of time, like being an agent. And mortgage um, wouldn't be the answer right now. No. Um, but again, I mean, that ob obviously piggybacks sort of being an agent. I, I hear him in terms of investing. You know, you're having to spend a lot. But there's a huge reward right now, too, with investing. Um, I don't have an answer. I really don't. I, I, well, I, don't. I, I mean, I agree with him. Somebody's coming in kind of fresh. I mean, you, you're ne if you've never invested, it's likely you, you don't have – contractor contacts and all these different things that are right, I mean, make... you got into real estate investing first. And I lost a ton of money, ton of money. Yep. You know, so that's his point. Like if I would have done that at 18, if I would have became an agent at 18 with the drive that I had to go out there and buy three homes from 19 to 21 and my willingness to work and not blame others and take responsibility. And, and I just applied all of that to being an agent then, Oh, wow. I would have been off and running and that would have been a much, uh, you know, faster path to, you know, making it in this industry as opposed to what I did. So I agree you, you, when you don't know what you're doing, investing, you can lose a lot of money, right? If yes. you know what you're doing, it's, it's likely a faster path. If, if, you know, if you're, um, knowing what you're doing, but to, to his point, there's so much money in brokerage and, and just going back to like what Damon John said, I mean, 
for the agents that actually the 13 percent that make it in this business that take responsibility and don't blame the conditions they can go out there and make a ton of money um and so I, I do ultimately agree with Ryan. Let me know what you think down below. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I think, think he's kind of nailed it there. Oh, for sure. But I, I do think that, you know, being an agent opens opens up so many additional avenues where then all those additional opportunities can get you to that million dollars even faster. That's um, right. Again, I mean, I think throughout, you know, a lot of agents that have been agents for a significant amount of time have started investing, um, whether that, you know, to, to, to flip or to hold or what have you. So again, I think that that, that I think real estate certainly leads, it's, le it's led me into directions that I didn't even know were possible. So, um, yeah, I guess I agree, but I don't know that it's the only way. No, not the only way. I, I think from his perspective is in his shoes, it's the fastest path. Right. Me well, being an agent, I think it's I, for him the safest. Again, it yeah. sounds like because he has the most control over it. If he puts in more time, he can make more money. Um, I, I think it's. It sounds like it's something that he always leans on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I and I agree. I also think that while not faster to like that million mark that they're talking about on that pod, but um, but maybe maybe faster than most things in. If somebody's young and in their 20s, and I talked about this a little bit on the hot sheet this morning, uh, the fastest path to building a huge business might be to go and get your electrical license, your plumbing license, your uh, HVAC license, and not get into debt in college. Go grab that. Go through the, the – it's a hard thing to do. It's harder than, than college degrees, by the way, to go and uh, – get that apprenticeship and go through the school and get that license. It's a, it's a, and it's an admirable thing because it's something that we need. For sure. Um, and I think once you have that license, if you've got any, if you spend the time getting that license, learning the trade, and then also learning business from somebody in the meantime, and you come out and you're able to start one of those businesses, you could build a monster and it's, and it's not going away. Right. Like, you know, chat GPT is not going to come and, install a new kitchen for you uh nicole they, they might disrupt the designer a little bit with some thoughts and and some processes there but they're not going to disrupt the installer and so i just think there's so much opportunity there and unfortunately people are going into like college and by the time they get out or the, but by the time they've even started the position they're going for is completely outdated when plumbing hvac these positions are not going away. You can right. guarantee them for multiple decades into the future. Right. Um, and again, where can that lead you to? Now you're an expert in 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 building. You're an expert in a home. Yeah. People are now trusting you. I mean, you could probably get your real estate license. Or again, you can start investing and then your time is being spent on flipping your own, you know, your own properties instead of paying somebody else. Yeah, yeah I think it's genius. But generally speaking, if you've got zero dollars in your pocket. Yeah. Becoming a real estate agent, knowing that business inside and out, like you said, Nicole, the relationships and then the access to, you know, people say, hey, I tried being a real estate agent for a couple months. I'm not making any money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't do anything in a couple months. You can't even lose 10 pounds in a couple months. Like the, people that think you're going to make it in a couple months have a weak mindset. And and, um, and that's, I think, what Damon John was talking about yesterday, what Nick Bailey, CEO of Remax, is talking about, like, can't want it more than anybody. Right. And if you got a weak mindset, then don't do what Ryan Sirhan did and, and come into real estate. Go, you know, um, you know, become a barista or something. I don't know. A barista. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong with that. You want to be wrong with that? you want to be a barista. I want to open a cigar lounge. I think I'm done with everything and I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a cigar lounge. I think you would probably smoke all of your inventory. No, don't 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 uh you don't get high from cigars unless Unless you never smoke one, I guess you could get a little buzz, but you're not supposed to get high on your own supply. I know, but you enjoy. You enjoy your cigars. Oh, I love a cigar. Yes. I love a cigar. That was my only point. Might have to have a couple this week. I think you already had one. <laughs> All right. All right. I gotta go check out Andy Florence, CEO enjoy. of CoStar. See, see what he says about destroying Zillow. Maybe I'll update that uh, on next week's Real Word. Nicole, I'll see you next week. We'll be in person. I will person. see you next week. I love it. Can't wait to do it. The weather's, you're bringing nice weather with you, so I'm excited. Thank God. I can't I, wait. I agree. Might bring my golf clubs. Keep it real, guys. See you guys.